uh, thing we're going to go through inshallah the speech of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah on the Sayyidul Istighfar right this is the greatest supplication for making istighfar and making tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal and Ibn Taymiyyah has a beautiful commentary upon this and so we'll just go through that as one example of many in the Quran and the Sunnah of like words and adhkar and, and things you know by which we seek forgiveness from Allah Azza but this is Sayyidul Istighfar so Shaykh al-Islam says uh, for, for brevity I'll not read the Arabic you know uh, to keep it short he says this hadith has comprised many lofty types of knowledge there are many lofty types of knowledge comprised in this hadith and it is for this reason that it deserves to be called Sayyidul Istighfar. This specific supplication deserves to be called the chief or the, the chief of those things by which you make Istighfar because it has many lofty meanings and types of knowledge contained therein. So he says, فَإِنَّهُ صَدَّرَهُ بِاعْتِرَافِ الْعَبْدِ بِرُبُوبِيَةِ اللَّهِ so the first thing that this supplication begins with, Allahumma anta rabbi, Allahumma anta rabbi. The first thing it begins with is the servant acknowledging the rabubiya of Allah Azawajal. So you are first of all acknowledging and saying and mentioning to Allah, you are my Lord, oh Allah, you are my Lord. You are affirming that Allah is the creator, the owner, the provider. You are acknowledging, you know, this tawheed or rabubiya. Then he added to this, he added to this, the Tawheed of Uluhiyyah. Because he then said, La ilaha illa ant. Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa ant. Oh Allah, you are my Lord, and there is none which has the right to be worshipped except you. So we have Tawheed al rububiyyah then we have Tawheed al uluhiyyah Then he said, ثم ذكر اعترافه بأن الله هو الذي خلقه وأوجده ولم يكن شيئا فهو حقيق بأن يتولى تمام الإحسان إليه بمغفرة ذنوبه كما ابتدأ الإحسان إليه بخلقه so what's the general meaning here? The general meaning here is that Allah Azawajal is your Lord. He's the one who created you. He brought you from nothing. He brought you from nothing. You were nothing. Then you came to be. And if this is the one that you are invoking, the one who created you, then isn't he also worthy of being the one who forgives you as well? This is the connection now. Between the, between the two things, right? There are some things in the words, when you say them, the meaning isn't present in the actual words. But the meaning is present in the connection between the words and the flow of meaning. So the flow of meaning, what you are saying here, when, you are, when you're saying, Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa anta, you are saying, oh Allah, you are my Lord, you are the one who created me, you are the one who brought me from nothing into something, and you are the one who fed me and so on and so forth. So if you are that one, then you are also the one who obviously is going to forgive me. And that's why I'm turning to you. So there, there are some things in the meaning that are not in the wording, but they are, but they are present you know, in, the, in the many meanings. And that's what Ibn Taymiyyah is pointing out here. So he then says, ثُمَّ قَالْ وَأَنَا abduk. Then he says, وَأَنَا abduk. اللَّهُمَّ أَنْتَ رَبِّي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ أَنْتَ خَلَقَتَنِي Right, so we forgot that Anta Khalaqatani, you are the one who created me. Wa ana abduk. Wa ana abduk. Which means you are now acknowledging Ubudiya to Allah. You are now saying that I am in servitude to you. I am enslaved to you. I'm in servitude to you. Wa ana abduk. So this now is acknowledging that Allah created Adam and the sons of Adam to worship him um, as we see in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a report there's a report which Ibn Taymiyyah says Yaqool Allahu Ta'ala 
ابن آدم خلق توك لنفسي وآدم I created you for myself for my worship وخلقت كل شيء لأجلك and then I, then I created everything for you meaning for your benefit everything else right so obviously the plants the animals the vegetation the sun the, the moon for, for times and, and whatever and the rain and the winds and the animals for milk and transport and clothing and everything else so I created you for my worship and I created everything else for you فَبِحَقِّي عَلَيْكَ لَا تَشْتَغِلْ بِمَا خَلَقْتُهُ لَكَ عَمَّا خَلَقْتُكَ لَهُ which means so by the right by my right over you by my right over you which is obviously to worship Allah alone do not become preoccupied with that which I created for you away from that which I created you for do you understand what he's saying meaning don't be preoccupied by the things which are created for you don't be preoccupied by them away for the thing that I actually created you for right which is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal so then Ibn Taymi says um, فَالْعَبْدُ إِذَا خَرَجَ عَمَّا خَلَقَهُ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ تَاعَتِهِ وَمَعْرِفَتِهِ وَمَحَبَّتِهِ وَالْإِنَابَةِ إِلَيْهِ وَالتَّوَكُّلِ عَلَيْهِ فَقَدْ أَبَقَ مِنْ سَيِّدِهِ So a servant, when he leaves what he has been created for, when he departs from obedience to Allah, and having knowledge of Allah, and loving Allah, and turning back to Allah, and placing his reliance upon Allah, then it is like this, this, this servant has fled from his master. You know, like a slave, you know, he, he, he has a master, and he's being provided for with his provisions, his food, his drink, his clothing, his shelter, right? And he's receiving this benevolence, which he's not able to bring from himself. And then one day he suddenly decides, I'm going to flee from my master. He's goes on the run so in the same way a servant he essentially does the same thing with Allah when he departs from obedience departs from reliance departs from turning back to Allah basically he's literally as if he's fleeing from his master like a slave flees from his master so in this supplication um, you know what, what what he's doing in this supplication he's coming back to his master and as Ibn Taymi says فَإِذَا تَابَ إِلَيْهِ وَرَجْعَ إِلَيْهِ فَقَدْ رَاجَعَ مَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهِ مِنْهُ فَيَفْرَحُ اللَّهُ بِهَذِهِ الْمُرَاجِعَةِ وَلِهَذَا قَالَ um, uh, so, so basically when a servant returns back then this is something that Allah rejoices with and that's why we have the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam اللَّهُ أَشَدُّ فَرْحًا فَرْحًا بِتَوْبَةِ عَبْدِهِ من واجد من واجد راحلته عليها طعامه وشرابه بعد يأسه منها في الأرض المحلكة. so وهو سبحانه هو الذي وفقه لها وهو الذي ردها إليه. so الله جل is more pleased with the repentance of his servant, his servant coming back, than there is the one who, you know, a servant who loses his camel in the desert. The camel has his drink, has his food, has all of his provisions, and he's in a, in a, in a land which is going to, he's going to perish without the, the provisions of his camel. And then he basically despairs, and then the camel returns back to him. Imagine how happy this man would be. Allah is more rejoiceful with the repentance of his servant than that man is with his camel returning back to him. Right? So then... After you say, وَأَنَا عَبْدُكْ وَأَنَا عَبْدُكْ He then says, وَأَنَا عَلَىٰ أَحْدِكَ وَوَعْدِكَ مَسْتَطَعَتْ I am upon your covenant, I'm following your covenant, and believe in your promise as much as I am able. So now here, what the servant is mentioning, he's saying, he knows that Allah has made, given a covenant, to his servants, he's commanded them and prohibited them and given them a covenant that they must adhere to. And in turn for that, he has promised them 
his promise that he will reward them with the greatest of rewards. So the servant is basically saying, Oh Allah, I'm following your covenant and I believe in your promise. So I'm doing what you told me to do. I'm sticking to the, the covenant, to the agreement. And I also believe firmly in what you have promised. This is a bit like fasting in Ramadan. You know the hadith? Man sama Ramadan imanan wahtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. Whoever fasts in Ramadan, so he does the, 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 the fasting, and he also believes, you know, he has ihtisab, he believes firmly and he expects reward from Allah Azawajal, then he will be forgiven. In the same way here, the servant, he's implementing the covenant of Allah Azawajal, and he believes firmly in the promise of Allah Azawajal. So this is also being mentioned in the state of asking forgiveness from Allah Azawajal. Right? He's mentioning all of these things. The rububi of Allah Azawajal. The uluhiyya of Allah Azawajal. Being created by Allah Azawajal. Then the ubudiyya of Allah Azawajal. Then saying that I am upon your covenant. And I, am, I believe firmly in your promise. He's mentioning all of these things. Then he says, Mastata'at. Mastata'at. Which means as much as I am able to, as opposed to as you deserve to be. See the difference? Because no one can worship Allah Azawajal as he deserves to be worshipped and thanked. So for that reason it is said, Mastata'at, as much as I am able to. So Ibn Taymi says, Bihazbi istata'ati. Which means, as much as I am able, not as much as is deserving that you be worshipped and, and, and you deserve to be worshipped. Then he says, وَفِيهِ دَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ إِثْبَاتِ قُوَّةِ الْعَبْدِ وَاسْتِطَاعَتِهِ وَأَنَّهُ غَيْرُ مَجْبُورٍ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكِ Now just mention a point of creed, which is this itself is a proof that a servant does have actual ability, right? So you're not like uh, the Jabariya who say that a servant is compelled to do what he does. He has no power and ability of his own, right? He's like a robot just doing things with no choice, right? Rather, we do have the ability. We do have an ability, right? This is a refutation of the Jabariya. So uh, then after this, after mentioning that I am upon your covenant and I believe firmly in your promise as much as I am able, he then says, "A'udhu bika min sharri ma sanat." A'udhu bika min sharri ma sanat. This is the meaning of istighfar, right? I seek refuge in you from the evil of that which I have done. This is istighfar. This is the essence of the meaning of istighfar. A'udhu bika min sharri ma sanat. He then says, فَاسْتِعَاذَتُهُ بِاللَّهِ بِاللَّهِ الْإِلْتِجَاءُ إِلَيْهِ وَالتَّحُسُّنِ بِهِ وَالْحُرُوبِ إِلَيْهِ مِنَ الْمُسْتَعَاذِ مِنْهُ So basically this is a bit like when you are fleeing from an enemy, you are being chased by an enemy, you are fleeing from an enemy and you come to a fortress and you enter the fortress and the fortress protects you from the enemy. So in the same way, when you say, أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا سَنَعَتْ This is effectively what you are doing. You are finding sanctuary. You are finding refuge in a fortress from the evil of your deed catching up with you and afflicting you. And also in this statement is also a point of creed. The point of creed is وَفِيهِ إِثْبَاتُ فِعْلِ الْعَبْدِ وَكَسْبِهِ In this is a proof that the servant has his own action and he earns by way of his own action. Right? That the servant actually does have his own action. That when we act, that act is our act. It's ascribed to us. And we earn on account of our, of our own actions. So this also is a refutation of the Jabariya who say that you know, these actions are not really our actions. We are forced to do them. We are compelled to do them. 
we don't really these are actions of Allah not our actions right this is incorrect the servant has ability and power to act and the actions he does are his own earnings right these are two points of, of creed which are contained within this supplication then he says um, he says a'udhu bika min sharri ma sanat the evil is ascribed to you the evil is ascribed to you this is also a point of creed and as for Allah the Lord he belong to him belong the beautiful names and the best attributes his actions are wisdom and rectification wa kullu af'alihi hikmatun wa maslahatun right so the evil only exists in our deeds the evil does not exist in the actions of Allah azawajal Allah's actions only contain pure wisdom and evil is only as it relates to us one of the examples that the scholars give to explain the meaning here is if you have a surgeon and a surgeon has to make an incision in your arm in order to treat you or something then in relation to you in relation to you that is an evil because it's harming you right it's an evil to you as it relates to you but the action of the surgeon is an act of wisdom and benevolence right and it has a far reaching wisdom behind it so we can't say there's evil in the action of the surgeon but we can say there's evil in this for you because you feel the pain obviously so evil does not trace back to allah azawajal in any form or any fashion in any way no matter what that evil might be on this earth the only thing which exists the actions of Allah Azawajal from the things which exist is wisdom, al-hikmah, and maslaha, and you know benefit and rectification. Wa yu'ayyidu hada qawluhu al-Islam wa sharru laysa ilayk. This is a hadith. Al-khair kulluhu biyadayk wa sharru laysa ilayk. Goodness is all in your hands, and evil does not approach you or come to you. Does not come from you. So after mentioning that the evil is from what you did and seeking refuge from Allah from its evil, the servant then says, Abu Abu Ubi Ni'matika Ali, I acknowledge your favor upon me. I acknowledge all of this. I affirm this. And I know that you bestowed me with all of these favors. And it is me. I am the one who is the Mudhnib. I am the one who is sinful. You are the one who gave me Ihsan and from me Minkal Ihsan wa minni al Isa'a. You are the one who are benevolent to me and kind to me. I am the one who has done evil. So therefore I, I praise you for your, you know, basically you are praising Allah for his favors and you are saying that you or Allah are the one who should be praised and I am the one who is seeking forgiveness for my sin. So then Ibn Taymiyyah says, وَلِهَذَا قَالَ بَعْدُ الْعَارِفِينَ Some of the people of, you know, of, of, of knowledge, they said, يَنْبَغِي لِلْعَبْدِ أَن تَكُونَ أَنْفَاسُهُ كُلُّهَا نَفْسَيْنَ نفسين. It is desirable for the servant for all of his, like his breathing, meaning what he utters, to be two. نَفَسًا نَفْسًا uh, one in which he is praising his Lord. And the other one, and the other breath in which he is seeking forgiveness for his sin. And he mentions a story of Al Hassan Al Basri, Rahimahullah, with a, with a youth. And this youth used to sit in the mosque while Al Hassan Al Basri was sat in a, in a corner speaking to people teaching them whatever and so this youth is sat in a corner and so one day you know he wouldn't sit with al hasan al basri and so one day he passed by him and al hasan said to him what is it with you that you don't sit with us why aren't you sitting with us and so this youth he said inni uh, inni usbi'u bayna ni'matin min allah 
تستوجب علي حمدا وبين ذنب مني يستوجب استغفارا فأنا مشغول بحمده واستغفاره عن مجالستك He says indeed I reach the morning I enter the morning between a favor of Allah that necessitates that I praise him and between a sin from me that necessitates that I seek forgiveness from him. So I am preoccupied with praising him and seeking forgiveness and that's preoccupying me from sitting with you in your gathering. And so then Al-Hasan said, Anta afqahu indi min Al-Hasan. So saying, you are more, you have more fiqh than me, than Al-Hasan, meaning myself. You see? So after mentioning this uh, statement from uh, Ibn Taymi then, he, Ibn Taymi then says, وَمَتَى شَهِدَ الْعَبْدُ هَذَيْنَ الْأَمْرَيْنِ اسْتَقَامَتْ لَهُ الْعُبُودِيَةِ When the servant witnesses these two things, when he observes these two things in his life, which is he's either thanking Allah for the favor that he enjoys or seeking forgiveness for the sin that, he, that he's committing or the shortcoming, then his servitude to Allah will become upright. وَتَرَقَّى فِي دَرَجَاتِ الْمَعْرِفَةِ وَالْإِيمَانِ وَتَسَاغَرَتْ إِلَيْهِ نَفْسُهُ وَتَوَادَعَ لِرَبِّهِ وَلِهَذَا هُوَ كَمَالُ الْعُبُودِيَّةِ وَبِهِ يَبْرَأُ مِنَ الْعُجْبِ وَالْكِبْرِ وَزِينَةِ الْعَمَلِ So he then says, when a servant observes these two things, these two affairs, his servitude to Allah will become upright, will become correct. And he will then start raising in the ranks of iman and, and knowledge, knowledge and iman. And this is how you increase in knowledge and iman. Alhamd, al-istighfar. And his soul will become small to himself. He'll start seeing his soul to be small and small. And he will then become more humble to his Lord. He will have tawadu'. And um, he, this now becomes the perfection of ubudiyyah. And then he will free himself and rid himself from self-amazement and pride and beautifying his own actions, right? This is, this is a disease that you don't want to be inflicted with. We start thinking that, you know, um, you know, that I've achieved this and I have done this and I've learned this and I've memorized this and I've done this and I achieved that and I did this. You will forget all of these things when you realize that you have a Lord that must be praised and you have sin that you must seek protection from, from, its, from its evil. And you preoccupy yourself in that, these are the, the nataij, these are the, the, the outcomes and the benefits that you receive from all of